Hello neighbors and welcome back to the Monroe Style Jamming Workshop. This is the third one we've done of them and we're looking at theme time. Okay, so this is a great instrumental that was probably written by Bill Emerson, recorded with uh, Jimmy Martin and the Sunny Mountain Boys. And what we want to do today is get a nice good simple version of the melody that we can play uh, starting with eighth notes and then just adding your upstroke as we do to create the 16th note texture the digga 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 okay but before we even start if you've never listened to theme time we need to do that so even if you have heard theme time before let's just go ahead and listen to it again here we go <laughs> that theme time it's good hummable melody okay it's in the key of a and uh, you know perhaps the most important thing about all this learning by ear is just getting to where you can go da 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 Okay, so it's kind of imitating the banjo there. You might obviously perhaps know that already. Okay, if you did know that, you can stop the video. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, so, uh, you know, we're kind of like, you know, humming the banjo part. And we're going to do some things that are slightly different, which hopefully will be more advantageous for beginning mandolin. All right. So this is just so we can have, you know, it's for a lot of different reasons, but so we can learn the melody to go slowly through it um, and really understand every single note, get the phrasing right, the mathematical grid, all that stuff, the chords. We're going to talk about the chords here in a second, but to use this melody as a basis for improvising with the Monroe modules. So you got to be able to play your, your you know, uh, the first little bit in A and then put a device in in G and then to be able to do your devices through the the B part or D A. Let's talk about the chords, okay? So it goes like this. One, two, three, and four, and A, two, three, four, five, six, G, two, E, two, three, four, A, two, three, four. Okay, so the first thing we're going to notice is there's a split bar in there. Okay, so you can count it as six beats of A and then two beats of G or you can think about it as a split bar a bar has four beats in it so the first bar as we're counting them anyway first bar has four beats of A one two three four the second bar has two beats of A and then two beats of G one two three four okay so the first two beats are in A second two are in G all right you can count them like one two one two you can count them in twos or you count the whole bar. One, two, three, four. The next bar is four beats in E. One, two, three, four. Then back to A for four beats. One, two, three, four. So the A part is four bars. The first one is just A. The second one splits between A and G. The third one is just E. And the fourth one is just A. Okay? That whole sequence repeats two times. Well, <laughs> you play it once and you play it again. If that's repeating two times, then it repeats two times. Or it repeats at least one time. Okay? So it's the, the whole A part is eight bars total. It's four bars, and then you repeat that. Okay? Not trying to be from the department of redundancy department, but 
Just trying to be clear, okay? Second part has these stops, and it stops on each chord, but you can still think about each bar having four beats. So four beats of D. One, two, three, four. Okay, then it goes to A. One, two, three, four. Four beats in A. And then it goes up to E, excuse me, B. B is in boy. This is your two chord. All right, B is in bluegrass. Uh, uh, B is in binary <laughs> or non binary. I guess that'd be in B. All right, B is in banana. Okay, it's so up there in, in banana. Four beats. Okay, did, did we lose track already? And then four beats of E. Okay, and then the B part plays the the last part of the A part. Okay, well, it's really the, the second half of the A part. Okay, so it goes, you know, from the, it has that full bar of A, the split bar between A and G, full bar of E, and full bar of A. Okay, is that confusing enough? I hope so, or I hope not. Whatever is better, I hope that. Okay, so let's go over the B part again. Okay, so here's the D. So D, two, three, four, A, two, three, four, B as in banana, three, four, E, two, three, four. And on the record with Jimmy, uh, I believe they just hit hit the stop, boom, and that's it. But you might have some people that want to go boom, 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 or something like that, you know, because that could be fun and exciting. Uh, and before you come back into the regular time, for the back half of the B part, which is the exact same as the back half of the A part, okay? So I hope that's not too confusing, or I hope if you do like it confusing, that it's just the right amount of confusing. Okay, so we wanna be in our flow zone, so it's not too easy and it's not too hard, but we're right there in the middle, okay? So we can flow, okay? So now that we might have the chords understood, let's take a breath. <sighs> okay, now let's think about what we're gonna do with this melody here, all right? So we really want to get it in our head so we can kind of hum it. If humming stuff is difficult for you, then uh, I would recommend practicing it because even if you're like not humming on pitch, you might still be getting some of the shape. So like the notes are going to be like, da -da 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 so if, even if you're just going like, -da 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 uh, which might, might not be the right notes, you're still kind of like engaging with the process, which can be good. Of course, try to hit the right notes. Uh, unless you just prefer hitting the wrong notes, but that's kind of weird. You probably wouldn't. <laughs> I'm just being a little silly, but try to have fun as I make a video here. And uh, because if it's not too, a little bit entertaining, you might just turn it off. And some people that don't really care about learning the tune, they might just watch it because the little part here is funny in there. But then some people might not like it because they don't want me being funny or trying to think that I'm funny and not being funny. Uh, but anyway, we're just kind of learning as we're going. Okay. So anyway. Let's, ha let's try to have a little fun as we hum this melody. I feel like I'm being like, being like Frank Wakefield. That's our A part, okay? Now the main difference between how we're doing this melody like this and what the banjo is playing, because it's pretty similar, you know, like all the... Banjo, when it goes to that E part, this is just so you know, because the more you know, you know, the banjo goes like this. But we're not going to do that. We're going to do something slightly different. It's going to be like this. All right, so when you add your upstroke, it kind of sounds like this. Something like that, give or take, you know, 5%, maybe 10%, maybe just 5%, okay? All right, so now let's learn our first line, okay? All right, so we're switching things up here. Hopefully this microphone is gonna be here a little bit better. Didn't have that, it's not configured correctly, but uh, that's okay, because maybe now it's a little bit better. Okay, so now we're gonna start learning the song line by line, note by note, okay? So get your downstrokes ready. Here's your first line. And four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and... Okay, so there are pickup notes. There are three pickup notes, and there are eighth notes. These are all going to be downstrokes, okay? So the pre-roll pre is going to be like one, two, three, and four, and one... Okay, so the and of three, four, 
and the AND of 4 are all going to be your pickup notes, and then the 1 is going to be your open E. All right, this is a little chromatic pickup note situation. It starts on the 4th fret of the A, 5th fret of the A, 6th fret of the A, and the open E. All right, I'd recommend that you start with your middle finger on the 4th fret, and then your ring finger note for 5, and slide it up for 6. Also pick it, and then you're going to just be hanging on the open E when you get there. That's the pickup note situation. All right, very important. You could even slide from 3 to 4 you want to go to sneaky. But if that's a little bit too much, don't even worry about it, okay? I don't usually do that. It's kind of cool. All right, so once you get to the downbeat, which is the open E, it's going to sound like this. One and two and... So your first two beats are just downstrokes on the open E. One and two and that's four of them. All right. So then we're to the third. Let's just listen to this whole full bar. Okay. In A. One and two and three and four and. All right. Those are eight eighth notes for one bar. That's the full bar of A before the split bar. We haven't gotten there yet. Okay. So you have four on the open E. One and two and. And then one on the fourth fret of the A and three more on the open A. All right, here's how you count that. One and two and three and four and. That's pretty simple, okay? But if you haven't got it yet, just stop the video and work it out until you get it and keep doing that along and along and then you go slowly. Be gentle with yourself. It can be a lot of information, it can be overwhelming. Uh, but if it's, not, it's a piece of cake, then just piece of cake and on and up, okay? One and two and three and four and. All right, so four open E's. One and two and one fourth fret of the A, three, then open A, and four, and three of those. Okay, so four, one, and then three. I'm saying it a lot of different ways. You know, but the most important thing is to hear it. This all comes after the pickup notes. And four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and when you finally add your upstroke, it's going to sound like this. And four, and one, and a two, and a three, and a four, and a. And you can either double your uh, pickup notes or not. That's a little bit putting the cart before the horse. We don't need to worry about that. We just need to learn the eighth notes first and then add the sixteenth notes at the end. I just want to give you a preview of what, what, can, what can happen if you learn this. And, you know, okay. So now we're up to the split bar. All right. Okay, have a little fun. You know, so this is the part where it has two beats of A and then two beats of G. All right. It's going to sound like this. This is our second full bar. And the pickup notes, first bar, here's our second bar. All right. It's going to sound like this. One and two and three and four. All right, just listen in again. One and two and three and four and. Okay, so our first two beats, one and two and, that's all in A. And then it goes to G, three and four and. I'll tell you exactly what that is. Starts on the fourth fret of the A. One and, so two strokes there. The second beat is the second fret, isn't that convenient, of the A string. Two, and the and of two is the open A. And one and. Two and all right, so get that one and two and then it goes to this little double stop. What is a double stop? It's when you're stopping two of the open strings with your fingers. You're fretting them. Um, sometimes you might, you know, that, that definition could extend to be like, okay, you know, if you play your open G, you know, fifth fret of the D and second fret of the A, is that a triple stop? I guess you could say that, you know. Like, you know, can can the open string be a stop because the nut's stopping it? Sure, okay. We don't need to worry about that. It's just a little bit of supplemental mandolin information that you can regale your friends with at your next dinner party. <laughs> okay, all right, so fifth fret of the D, second fret of the A. All right, this is where we're gonna do two downstrokes, and the trick to the double stops is make sure you're playing all four strings, one, two, three, four, at the same time. Three and four and. So we're coming down to this G chord halfway through this bar. It starts out in A. One and two and. And then three and four and. Okay, this is our second bar. All right, so you got one and two and. Then four more eighth notes. All downstrokes, of course. These are all downstrokes. All right, right now. Fifth fret of the D, second fret of the A. Three and four. Make sure you're playing through all four strings each time. Three and four and. And you don't really want to do it like three and four and. You'll play them all at the same time. Three and four and. Because ultimately you'll be going three and four and. Or three and a four and. Don't worry about 
worry about that right now. Just get the eighth notes, okay? All right, so, so far we have pickup notes and we have two bars. And this is what it sounds like. One, two, three. And four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and... Okay, all right, that's what we got. Next comes the E bar. It's four beats of E. All right. This is the part where the banjo goes. But we're going to do something slightly different on the mandolin. Okay. That's cool. Not everybody has to play the exact same melody. It just kind of has to be mostly the same. All right. So what we're going to do is this. All right. So it might sound weird at the end. Those are the pickup notes repeating again. Okay. So let's break that down. One and two and three and four and... That's your whole E bar. Okay, those are your eight eighth notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That belong to the E bar. Okay, so we're starting here. Let's learn, let's learn the first two beats. One and two and... All right. So you're starting with two downstrokes on the second fret of the D. Up to the sixth fret of the D then up to the second fret of the A. Those are your first two beats. One and two and... And then we're gonna do this little descending scale thing. It's gonna start on the open E. All right, and it's gonna end on the, the downbeat of the next bar, which is gonna be the open A. It's a little, might be a little confusing. You know, but, but we just wanna get that sound in your head. One and two and three and four and... Okay, all right, so what is the scale? It's descending from the open E, fifth fret of the A, fourth fret of the A, second fret of the A. And we're just gonna stop there because that's the end of our eight eighth notes in the E chord bar. All right. One and two and three and four and. Okay, that's it. One and two and three and four and. Okay, so before we add the last bar, let's take it from the top. From the pickup notes. One, two, three. And four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and that's as far as we got. If you got it, very good. If you didn't, stop the video and work it out until you got all that comfortably. Okay? All right, so now we're at the last bar of the A part the first time, which also goes back to the A chord coincidentally. Um, all right, so here's what it sounds like. Okay, this is kind of like a little tag, like where the band's going, ding, 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 ding. All right, so we're kind of approximating that. Okay, so it starts off, I'm gonna count that for you. One and two and three and four and. All right, so you got two open A's. One and up to the fourth fret of the A on the second B. Two, the and of two is the fourth fret of the D. And open A is the three, three. And then you're gonna start your pickup notes on and of three. And four and. Okay, so let's go over that again. A, A, fourth fret down to the fourth fret of the D, open A, all right, and then you're gonna walk up chromatically from the fourth fret, like we did in the very beginning. Okay, so one and two and three and four and... Okay, so you got that far and you got it feeling good, congratulations! We get a special bonus for putting that kind of musical work in because all of that simply repeats exactly like you did it right there you can put some changes in there if you want to, but for our purposes, we're just playing it exactly the same as we played the first A part, okay? Because the A part repeats, all right? So let's play the A part two times in a row. All right, here we go. One, two, three. And four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three. Okay, so uh, I might have fibbed unintentionally 
because at the very end of the A part, the second time, it doesn't walk up like it does in the middle of the two A parts. Okay, so what we can do there instead of going is we can just hang on the open A. So this is the last E bar. All right, we can, do, we can just play four eighth notes there instead of the uh, the open A and then the four, five, six, the chromatic pickup notes that we use at the beginning that we use in the middle of the A part. Okay, so just take that four, five, six out and just add three more open A's before we get to the B part. Okay. So if you wanted to, this is just an open invitation. This is an option if you want to at this point, just for funsies. You can add your upstroke and just see what it sounds like. So one of the advantages of doing it this way is that when you add your upstrokes, some of that is going to be a little bit challenging technically, but the way that it kind of works is just kind of beautiful that, uh, that this kind of arrangement, this particular arrangement is pretty forgiving. Okay. So if you miss a little note here or, th here or there, you know, if you like, you know, so instead of going like. For instance, maybe if you hit the open A, so maybe you didn't get your uh, fourth fret of the A down there twice, you just hit one and go to the open A, it actually flatters the arrangement instead of detaching, detracting away from it, okay? And that could be a subjective qualification, but hey, I'm a subjective qualifier? I'm getting out there with my talking here today, but I'm having a good time doing it. And I hope you're enjoying the lesson and we're just kind of cruising and, you know, not mean anything weird. I'm just trying to like have a little fun here with it. Okay. But what I'm trying to say is like, you know, you can just kind of play it. You know, and you can kind of bounce all, bounce all the way down. You know, if you go, you don't have to play, if you just bounce. You know, all that kind of stuff, okay? So, and Boba's getting excited about it. He likes to hear that bounce lick, and you know, that's one of his favorite licks, maybe. I'm just kidding. He's having a little fun here. Okay, so now we're on to the B part. All right, so here's what the B part is going to sound like. And the B part's cool because it's just the same thing four times, and then you play the A part again, okay? It's pretty cool. You know, it's going to sound like this. So uh, we're going to figure out what to do at the very end of that so we can kind of connect it. You know, we're going to have some pickup notes in there. It's kind of really hard to get down to that. We'll get there when we get there. Okay. So the B part starts in D. Okay. That's what we're aiming for with our eighth notes. Okay. Okay, so we're starting with this little 31, double stop in D. If you don't know the names of the numbers of the double stop system, you don't need to worry about it. I'm just telling you what it is so you can know. And if you want to know, why is it a 31? Because this note, the F sharp note, you don't need to know that either. Don't worry about it. The fourth fret of the D is the third note in the scale of D. One, two, three. So you can call that number the three in the D scale. Okay, because it's the third number in the scale. Do, re, mi. Mi is the third number in the D scale, so you can call it a three. All right. So then the other note that we're playing is the fifth fret of the A. All right, that's a one because that's a D note. That's the first note in the D scale, so you can call it a one. The number is significant of the order of the note in the scale. Okay, it's fairly simple. Sometimes that can be like really bizarre. But it's just really simple. So one, two, three, that's your third note. You can call that a three. All right. And then three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The eighth note in the scale is actually the same as the first note. It's a D, it's just higher. 
Okay, so that's a three and a one, so we can call that a 31 double stop. Okay, you don't need to know that. There's not gonna be a test. It's just so you can know it if you wanna know it. All right, you can rewind that and know it twice, twice in a row if you want to. You can just know it once really good. Okay, all right. So we're walking this little double stop up here. Okay, um, now what is going on here? This is, you can call this like, you know, inverting maybe like this little partial chord it might not be a chord because there's only two notes all right you can call it a two finger chord but if you want to get technical it might not be a chord there's only two notes you don't have to worry about that it's not gonna be a test okay it's just two notes that sound good together it's harmony walking up you're walking up the scale i know there's a chromatic bit, so it isn't really a scale you're just taking this little line and you're walking it up you know, you can call it many different things, okay? <clears throat> but what we need to know are the frets, okay? So the 31 double stop is your first finger on the fourth fret of the D and your middle finger on the fifth fret of the A, okay? We're gonna play that double stop, all four strings, twice. Okay, now your first move from there is gonna be with your first finger moving up one and your middle finger coming up two. Wow, okay, that might have been like challenging. Let's just say it one more time. Okay, so let's go back to four on the D, five on the A. Okay, so your first finger moves up one fret this way towards your right hand and your middle finger moves two. All right, so mid middle finger up two, first finger up one. Okay, that's your first little move there, your first inversion or what do you want to call it. Now we're gonna move chromatically. Chromatically just means like one fret at a time, basically in this context, okay? All right, so we got one downstroke here on five and seven. We push that up one fret, so it's going to be six and eight. All right. Okay, so right now we have one and two and three is going to be one fret higher than where we left off. Six and eight is going to be seven and nine. And we're going to play four downstrokes there. All right, one, two, three, four. All right, and that's gonna come on the third beat. So one and two and three and four and. Okay, so I've tried to explain that simply. If it's giving you a challenge, rewind the explanation, try to hunt it down again, and maybe don't move on until you got that, all right? One and two and three. Okay, so the cool thing about this tune is that you can just take that shape right there and you can go right back to your A two finger chord, which is just taking this whole thing that we just did on the D and the A string down to the fl floor wise. It's actually up pitch wise. Isn't that nice and confusing? To the A and the E string, same frets, same fingers. Okay. All right, so instead of starting on the fourth fret of the D string and fifth fret of the A string, now you're starting on the fourth fret of the A string with your first finger and the fifth fret of the E string with your middle finger and do the same thing. One and two and three and four and... And I suppose I could explain that again, but I'm not trying to be from the D department of the redundancy department, okay? So just try to figure that out. Okay, I feel a little bit guilty for not explaining it, but I kind of already did. I'm just telling you how to get to it, you know, teaching how to fish, fish, hopefully a little bit here. You got to fish for it. You got to hack that out. So you did it in D, explained it all in D. Just take that down one set of strings and you'll have it. And then guess what? We're just going to move that up two frets and start in B. This is going to be starting on the sixth fret of the A, seventh fret of the E, same kind of deal, same position. I will explain these explain these frets because they're different frets. It's the same relationship, you know, to the, the chord and all that kind of stuff. So sixth fret of the A, seventh fret of the E, that's where you start. All right, so once again, your first finger comes up one to now to the seventh fret of the A, and your middle finger comes up two to the ninth fret of the E. All right, so you got one and two. The and of two, you push up one and, and then three and four and. 
end up on the ninth fret of the A, 11th fret of the E. Three and four and. Okay, so from the top of the B, this is what we got. One and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four and. And you might have already guessed it. We're going to E, two finger E, sixth fret of the D, seventh fret of the A. And we're gonna do that same thing. So same fret numbers as we did in B. Okay, the, the last thing we did, we're just moving down one set of strings tonally, up one set of strings geographically. Okay, so you're coming to the D and the A strings. Again, that's kind of where we started out, where we started out in D. Now we're moving up two frets from there into E. It's, it's, it's over no frets from B. It's just up one set of strings down tonally. Isn't it nice and confusing? I, you're probably fine, following just fine. Okay, the only thing different we're going to do is, is when we get up to that one and two and three to the third beat there, we're going to kind of d duck out of the and four and, and we're going to do pickup notes. But it's going to be really hard to go one and two and three and four and one to nail that fourth fret of the A, especially fast. Okay, so we're going to instead use the open A. All right. One and two and three and four. Okay, so these are going to be our pickup notes. They're going to be different pickup notes. Before the pickup notes were four, five, six, open E. Nice and easy chromatic. So now we're starting on the open A, and we're going to the fourth fret, and then the fifth fret, and then from there, you're right into the, the A part. So the end of the, the B part, you don't need to do your your pickup notes again. You can just kind of hang there. And that's the end of it. Or you can tag it out. You don't really need to. You know, if you're, if you're playing it with your uh, upstrokes. Um, you can just come right back into your chop. If you want to. Or you can kind of linger there and let that ring for a minute and before you find your chops again. Okay, so this has been a nice little uh, adventure for us here today. Let's see if we can play through the whole thing with just eighth notes. Here we go. One, two, three. And four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three. add our upstroke and this will be the 16th notes all right this will be basically the completion of everything that we've learned uh, and this is kind of how you could play a simple beginner melody for theme time in a jam session or something okay on stage you know for yourself for your dog whoever likes it the most maybe just yourself who knows for a tree for a flower you know for a deer in the yard okay maybe one two three this as a, a basis for you know later learning how to put your you know modules in there
stuff like that for Monroe style improvising, you know. Looks like I need a little work. much more advanced obviously hope you've enjoyed this nice beginner melody for theme time and we'll see you on the next one adios